Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. God's grace through Christ is offered to everyone. So know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you're going through, you are welcome here today. A special welcome to all of those that are watching from around the country this morning. Welcome, whether you are watching live or whether you're watching us recorded. We are so glad that you are joining us, no matter where you're at or when you're at. Um, tonight, 9 o'clock, Denison First Facebook page uh, is Sunday night prayer time. A uh, little time of about 10 minutes where we get together and we just sort of decompress from a long week and pray up for the next week. Know that you're all welcome for that. Uh, time change. Time change. Thursday night's Bible study is going to get changed to 7 o'clock. It was at 6.30, but uh, works out better for some of our folks. So if you would like to join us, it's not too late. Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Um, church council meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So um, don't forget that. Are there any other announcements that we need to be made aware of today? You, um, Cody, you got the mic? We'll go over to Christy first. We'll save James for last, the best for last, right, James? So I don't know if you guys can hear, smell the hamburger, but we have our chili supper tonight. If you missed it a couple weeks from the churches a couple weeks ago, it's the same recipe. So from 4.30 to 6.30, come over to the church and just bring a donation for a tap or a free will donation. Either items, the items will stay here, and then the money goes to tap. When you say we, Christy, who do you mean? Oh, scouting for food. So it's the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts, and the Girl Scouts. Excellent. And well. I did the math. This is the 16th year that we've done this. Well done. So. All right, James, you're up. Enlighten us. Uh, it's the last Sunday for my 4-H sales. Uh, I'll be outside the door again. So this is the last Sunday. Yes. And what are you selling? Tell her what are you Fruits. Selling? Fruits. And butter braids. I Fruits and that. butter braids. Okay. All right. Any other announcements that we need to be made aware of? All right. If there are no other announcements, I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able. Wave to each other and say good morning and wave to all of those that are watching online. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And as long as we're up, let's sing, shall we?
Good morning. She is louder than me, and she doesn't even have a mic. Okay, please join me this morning in the call to worship. Have you come today weary from all that is happening in your life? Have you many burdens? Are any of you hurt and grieving this morning? Take heart, everyone. God is calling your name and waiting to gather you close in love. Please join me in the opening prayer, either found on the TV screen or in your bulletin. God of love and life, in this morning we pray that you would be and more in us that we might live more and more in you. Lord, take control of our lives and lead us into eternity in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. In our opening prayer, we'll pray for good grammar. <laughs> or, or copy and paste, whatever the case may be. This is that part of our service each and every week where we have the privilege of going before God as a family of faith, knowing that when we pray together, there's real power in our prayers. We generally start off with our joys and then our concerns. Uh, but before we get started, Patty, could we do a little happy birthday? I have a, uh, have you ever, have you ever, today I'm just like this fountain of useless information. Have you, ever, have you ever gone on the internet to find things and it leads to something else and something else and, and an hour later you're wondering how you ever got started? Well, I had a theory. I had a theory, so I started looking uh, online and it turns out I was wrong. It's only February and I was wrong. See, what I found was there is a, there's a woman in Japan that's 119 years old and 35 days today. And then there's another woman in France that's 117 years old and 360 days today. Now that surprises me. Uh, Larry's not feeling very well. And, and he's home today and he, he'll watch this either live or, or taped. And, and I was convinced that when I looked that up, I would actually find out that Larry was the oldest person. <laughs> I Imagine my shock. At only 112, he doesn't even make the top 10. So t today, what I'm going to what I'm going to have us do, because Larry's not feeling well, I'm going to invite you for just a second to stand and face the camera. Come on, stand up, face the camera, and join me and let's sing "Happy Birthday to Larry," shall we? You know, you, you just can't escape it, even if you're homesick. Uh, other joys, other joys, things that you'd like to share today. <laughs> All right, so I, I have one that I want to share with you. Um, I don't, you know, this time of year is a tough time for a lot of people. And we have had, as a church, um, uh, because of our downtown location, we get requests for lots of help all the time. And it's, it, it can, you know, it can wear on you, and we, we try to figure out what that, you know, what's legitimate and what we should help with and what we shouldn't help with, and, and, and it's not easy. And uh, last Tuesday... Um, I had a person from DHS call me that I didn't even know. They just called up and they said, I'm really stuck. I have nowhere to go. And they tell me that in Denison, we're, if we have a problem, we're supposed to call the Methodist Church. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, crap. I don't know where this is leading. And she said she's got this young person that's uh, um, 
a uh, single mom and they, they had to remove the child because she's living with the, the mother, grandmother, and the mother, grandmother is making some really poor choices. And, 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 the, and the mom, who's the young mother, uh, really has done everything they asked. Looks like she could have a huge potential for a great future. Um, but with all the things that they're doing, she has to have her own place. And, and with all the help they got her and everything, they were short $310 a month for five months. $1,500, right? Like, oh, man. And I said, well, you know, we don't have a fund for that. But in this church, what I do is I send out an email and we see if people respond. And I sent out an email and I was really looking for some advice. Is this something we should even help with what do you think and and I was supposed to send it out on Tuesday and she was supposed to call me back on Wednesday and I didn't get it done I was busy and I didn't get the email sent to y'all and uh, I didn't get it out until Wednesday at 10 o'clock and she called me back at 2 3 o'clock on Wednesday and and I said you know here's the problem we had this I didn't even get it sent out until 10 o'clock in the morning and she said Oh, well, that's okay. I understand. And I said, but it doesn't matter because we've got it covered. And as a matter of fact, if everybody that had said they would help helped, we probably could have covered that four or five times over in a four-hour period. What do, you, what do you think it means to be the church? I, I've, I've often said, and I'll say it again today, that church is not coming here for an hour on Sunday. That's, that's not what church is. Church is when we're out in the community changing lives and we come here on Sunday morning to rest up from all the work we did, to recharge our spiritual ba batteries so that we can go out next week and do it again. It was a Wednesday morning and you guys did church. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Well done. You inspire me. All right. Concerns. We have some things we need to hold up. Anybody want to go first? Anybody got anything you want to hold? All right. I've got a list today of things that we need to hold up. Um. We want to uh, remember Doug Schmidt's father, who's still recovering from the fall he took. Uh, we want to remember that. We've got a daughter that's struggling. Uh, it's going okay now, but is struggling with some uh, pregnancy issues that she's having. Um, we've got a family that, um, well, Colette has shared plenty of times, and, and she just has her hands full right now. So when I say that, imagine that you have all of Coletta's family in your hands, and we're going to take that whole family and lift them up before God. Um, we've got a, a, a father that's, that's struggling um, with pain and drugs, and it's just difficult right now. So we want to remember that father. We've got a number of people that are just so sick from maybe it's the crud maybe it's something else we don't know but that continues and they're just not feeling well so imagine today for each and every one that what you're going to do is you're going to hold them in your hands because that's what God calls us to do to love the least the last the lost and the ill the sick the hurting those that are in pain and you're going to you're going to hold them in your hands and you're going to lift them up to God and you're going to say, God, we need your help. That's what we do when we go to God in prayer. So let's now, as a family of faith, go before God. Let's pray. Lord, we come today and we have so much to be thankful for. This beautiful day, the the opportunity to be here together as a family of faith. 
family, friends, birthdays, anniversaries, so much to be thankful for. But yet we also know, Lord, that there are those that are struggling today. Maybe it's this crazy illness, maybe it's COVID, maybe it's pain, injury, maybe it's a broken relationship or financial problems, maybe it's abuse or addiction. Lord, whatever it might be, we lift them all up to you. Lord, for a family that is hurting on so many fronts, we just pray that you would comfort them as they journey on. Whatever it might be, Lord, you have told us that being human isn't easy, but that you'll always be with us. Lord, for a father that's fallen and hurt his head, for a father that has fallen and hurt his back, and for fathers everywhere that are feeling pain, we lift them up to you, asking that you would heal them, comfort them in their time of pain. Lord, for all of those that we have named this morning, and all of those that remain unnamed, we lift them up before you. And more than anything, Lord, we pray your presence and your peace upon them that they might know that as difficult as today seems, as dark as the clouds might appear, you are always with them, arm in arm, step for step, ready to carry them through even such a time as this. Lord, for all of this, we give you thanks and praise. Now let us join together with our brothers and sisters around the world this morning as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Cheryl, you want to do something with the kids today? Okay. Come on, kids. Come on up. Come on up.
plate in the back. O Lord, all that we have has been first given to us by you. And this morning we bring back just a portion of those gifts and offer them back to you. We pray your blessing upon these gifts and upon those that have given them. Help us to use the gifts in a way so that the world would know your incredible grace and love. Use these gifts for your purposes. Use our lives also. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. One, one last announcement. If we, anybody else wants to you know, do the children's sermon, I'll let you know what days my, me and my family are not going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to see if you can do this like your daughter. I want you to read all this scripture and don't take a breath. Don't take a breath. <laughs> Just, I mean, some I probably could, but not the, these 11 verses. <laughs> okay. So, our gospel lesson today is from Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were with partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. And when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question, and I'm going to give you a little background, and then we're going to come back to the question, okay? <laughs> first, uh, the first question, why is the gospel writer telling us this story? What's the What's the purpose behind this story? You know, uh, we, we read these stories, and sometimes what we do is we, we, we find ourselves saying when we're all done, what a great story, that's an awesome miracle. But maybe there's a bigger purpose involved than just telling us a story. Why would they tell us this particular story? Okay, keep that in your mind. And I want to I talk today about being an expert, okay? How many of you, and you don't have to raise your hands on this because I know you'd be embarrassed, um, how many of you feel like you're an expert in your field? I've, All made, right? I've made three guesses correctly in a row, so I'm <laughs> an expert. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and that could be you are um, a great parent. Right? You could, that's, you could be an expert. You've, you've gotten to the point where through all the kids and all the stuff that's happened, you feel like you're a great parent. You could be an expert software developer. 
uh, you, could, you could feel like you've gotten to the point where you know how to cook, right? There, there, what makes an expert? How, how, how do we know when someone's an expert? Well, I'm going to confess to you that I'm not much of a fisher person. Uh, to me, you put your line in and you pull your line out and that's fishing and everything in the middle is just waiting and I don't wait very well. So, so I've never been one to fish. So I wanted to know <clears throat> what makes an expert fisher person. And, and I found out way more than I wanted to know. You, the first thing that they tell you, if you want to be an expert fisher person, what you have to do is you have to, you have to focus on a species, a, a certain species of fish, and you're going to be the best fisher person of that species that you can. And once you've, once you've found the exact species, then you get into stuff like you know how deep the water is, because certain fish bite at certain depths better. Then you have to know things like what size hook to use, because you don't want to get one that's too big or too small. Did you know that there's different types of worms? I didn't know that. I thought you went in the yard and dug them up, but you got to have certain types of worms. And then if you get the ones that have the, the fake stuff, you know, that the, the fake worms and the fake bait and all that stuff, oh, there's a whole thing there that you have to know. You have to know what time of year to do it. You have to know all of these details just to be an expert fisher person. I, I thought this was something we got a pole and we got a cooler and we went out to the riverbank. But clearly, you can tell I'm not an expert, right? Keep that in mind and Ask yourself, what are you an expert at? What are you an expert at? So Jesus is standing beside the lake, and the crowd is just pressing in. People have started to hear from Jesus. And every place he goes, the crowd gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're pressing because they just want to touch him. Not only do they want to hear him, but they want to touch him. And he saw two boats there on the shore. The fishermen had gone out of them and they were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats because this is a safe place now. He could be in the boat, a little bit of water between him and the crowds, and he begins teaching. He got into the one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little bit from shore. Then he sat down and he taught the crowds. Now there's, there's something going on here. Because there's a reason that people want to listen to Jesus. What could it be? I mean, he, he carries no authority, no formal authority. He's not a, a, a member of uh, the greatest uh, synagogue or the greatest temple. Uh, he, he has no fancy degrees. He's not on a YouTube station. What is it that they want that they just keep pressing and pressing and pressing? Then when he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. This isn't, this isn't something that Jesus says, uh, let, let's go out there and see if we could catch a fish. Grab a, grab a pole and a worm and let's go see if we can catch a fish. This isn't like that. Think about this for just a minute. Jesus is telling the expert fishermen I mean, these people have done this their whole lives, just exactly what Cheryl said. They're, they eat, they, re, they rely on this food to eat, they rely on this food to make a living, they know exactly what they're doing, and Jesus says to them, let's go out there so that we can have a catch. We're not going for a boat ride, we're going out to catch some fish. Think about that thing that you're an expert in, right? Whatever you're at an expert in, whatever you're, you believe that you're an expert in, and somebody just that knows nothing about it tries to tell you how to do it, and they say, let's go do it, and, and not only that, you've just done it and it didn't work, because it tells us that in the thing, they had just fished all night and they got almost nothing. 
I mean, can you picture it? You come in, and this is like out of the cartoons, and the nets come, and they, they, they dump the nets out, and there's two cans, uh, two empty cans and a tire in the nets. This has been a bad night. The experts are frustrated because for them it didn't work out, and now somebody that we really don't know what they're doing is trying to tell us how to do it. Can, can you feel how you have no idea what you're talking about? You, you could just about hear Simon saying that, can't you? Really? We've done this all night, and you want us to do it again? How would you feel in that moment? Like, you know better, right? We'd, we'd know better than what the... I'm not doing that. I've been out there all night. You don't even know how to fish. But then something happens, Right? They push out. They go exactly where Jesus tells them. And they catch so much fish that they need help bringing it all in. They need help bringing it all in. I looked up expert. Okay, the definition of an expert is someone having comprehensive or authority authoritative knowledge in a particular area. I'm still not convinced that Jesus knew anything about fishing, right? I mean, and Jesus didn't need to do this, right? This is, this is Jesus who would feed 5,000 with a couple of fish and a little bit of bread. Jesus didn't need to go out and catch all this fish. He didn't do this all for himself. There was no reason for Jesus. Jesus could have done this a lot easier if he had just come up with a couple of fish and a couple of loaves, right? So why would Jesus do this? Why is the Gospel writer telling us this story today? Well, the other part of the definition for expert And I think this is as much as anything. An expert is somebody that will always influence those people around them. You can hear someone speak and you know they know what they're talking about. You can watch how someone does something and they don't even have to say anything, but you know they are so good at it that they know what they're talking about. I think about that with the sewing ladies. Well, maybe not Cheryl. Uh, you know I'm kidding you. you. You just know that they know what they're doing, right? So imagine whatever it is that you're an expert in, that you know all about, you've finally gotten to the point that you're an expert in your field. And you find out through authority and through influence that Jesus knows it better than you. And then you talk to your friend and whatever they're really good at, we find out that Jesus knows that better than them. We go right down the line and whatever it is that you know, you find out that Jesus knows it better than you. And we didn't go out and just catch a couple of fish. We caught more than we could possibly ever handle by ourselves. Fish that for them represented life, income, and Jesus brought it in abundance. Jesus brought it to them in ways that are more than they could ever expect, more than they could ever handle. See, there's a, there's a lesson in this story that says just when we have it all figured out, when we think we know all there is in life, when we think that life is, is this, Jesus comes to us and says, no, it's not that, it's this. And guess what? If you do it my way, you'll have it in abundance. You'll have it in abundance. 
There's a reason that we hear these stories in the gospel. Today, Jesus says to each and every one of us, in whatever our field is that we feel like we're an expert in, put out into the middle of the lake, and you're going to find that if you do it with me, you'll have it more than you can ever expect, and you'll have it in abundance. And then, when you have all that, the fish has been brought to the shore, you've, you've counted it all up, then Jesus says, now follow me, and it's time for you to fish for others. Because we're going to share this abundance with the others. What are you an expert in? Can you hear Jesus say to you, put out into the deep water. Let's go catch some fish. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, we come today so thankful, so thankful that you call. Lord, help us to listen. Help us to trust that you know better for our lives than we do for our own, and that what you offer us, our nets just so full, we can't hardly handle it. And then, Lord, help us share it with all that we meet that they might know your love, grace, and mercy too. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Today we have the privilege of sharing a meal together. As we get closer and closer towards Lent and towards Easter, when we come to the table, we think about that moment, that night, when Jesus was so concerned about us that even as he was about to be handed over, he invited us to dinner. Today, Jesus invites us again to dine with him in the upper room. Will you join me as we celebrate Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good, a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his closest friends in the upper room. And as they prepared to eat, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, O God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Here, take, eat from this, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, 
gave it to his disciples and said, Here, take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for your sins and the sins of the world so that we might know a new and everlasting covenant of love. Drink this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in, vi in vi final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, O Lord, all honor and yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. In just a second, I'm going to invite those that are helping to come up. But know that in our church, all are welcome at the table. You don't have to be a member of our church or a member of any church. Know that you're welcome. We'll, we'll start in the front, or we'll start with the choir, and uh, they'll come up, and someone will offer you a cube of bread, and they'll say something like, this is the body of Christ given for you, and you'll eat the bread. Then you'll get a cup, and somebody else will say, this is the blood of Christ poured out for you, and you'll drink the cup. And uh, you can deposit those on the, in the baskets on both ends, and we'll go around. And uh, parents, as far as your children go, know that that's a decision that you, that's up to you. If you think that communion will bless your children, then they are welcome here. I invite those that are helping to come forward at this time. Go over here. Thank you. I'm going to go on the other side. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the table is set, the feast is ready, our Lord bids us come.
has indeed been good to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm going to invite you now to stand if you are able, and we'll sing our closing hymn. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as we prepare to leave this sacred place and enter back out into the world this morning, remember, fear not, do not let your hearts be troubled, and in the midst of the storm, remember to trust in God. And may the blessing of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you today and evermore. Go with God, and God will surely go with you. Amen.